Tonight we want to talk about victory over self. Victory over myself. And this is the most crucial of all victories, as we will discover as we continue. Our text will be taken from Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32. Proverbs 16, verse 32. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. The one who is slow to anger, the one who can control his anger. The Bible says he's better than the mighty. He's mightier than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit, the one who has absolute control over himself, is better than he that taketh a city. Overcoming yourself is a greater victory than overcoming a city. That's what the word of God says. There is a song that is one of the greatest songs of victories. I don't hear it too often nowadays, but many of you know it. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. Now you want to ask me, why is that song, that song of commitment to Jesus Christ, such a powerful victory song? It is because it is linked directly to another song. I am married to Jesus. Satan, leave me alone. I am married to Jesus. Satan, leave me alone. My husband is coming to take me away. To everlasting home I am married I am married To Jesus Satan leave me alone I am married To Jesus Satan leave me alone My husband is coming to take me away to everlasting home. You see, man has many enemies, but the biggest three of the enemies that man has are number one, Death 
according to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 26. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 26. The Bible says, The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Very funny enemy. He waits till the last moment. Then it pounces. And there's no way we can dodge him. Hebrews 9 verse 27. Hebrews 9 27 says, It is appointed unto man once to die. So we're all going to die. If Jesus dies, kings will die. Presidents will die. Pastors will die. General Vasias will die. Because as anointed as Elisha was, Elisha died. So there's that enemy waiting. Fortunately, however, Jesus Christ has settled that one. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51 to 57, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 57, the Bible made it clear that by the special grace of God, death had been swallowed up in victory. If you are a bride of Jesus Christ, born again, committed to serving God in spirit and in truth, like you have been told, death is merely a horse to ride to the glorious home above. And I will see you in heaven in Jesus' name. The second enemy is the devil. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 to 9, 1 Peter 5, 8 to 9, calls him the adversary. Who is every day walking about, looking whom he may, dis- he may devour. On a daily basis. And he doesn't get tired. He keeps looking for someone to devour. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, he will not find you. And he will not find me. Because if you are married to Jesus, if you are committed to him, then Second Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9, Second Chronicles 16 verse 9, tells us that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them that fear him. So if we are serving the Lord in spirit and in truth, because this could be the most important message of your life. If you win the battle over yourself, the rest is easy. Enemy number one, death, that is already swallowed up in victory. Enemy number two, the devil, who is walking about. But the eyes of the Lord is running to and fro. And the one who is running will arrive before the one who is walking. So the eyes of the Lord will arrive before the devil can arrive. And then enemy number three is yourself. And is the biggest enemy of all. That is why those of you who are here tonight, by tomorrow you will already be singing songs of victory. It's your biggest enemy because he goes with you wherever you go. He sleeps with you. He wakes up with you. As a matter of fact, he's the biggest ally of the devil. And it's right inside. You see, when we read Romans 8 verse 31, Romans 8 31, and the Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? And many of us will jump up and say, nobody. 
For which two, those of you who uh, have been with me for some time, when I read that scripture, I don't see nobody at the end. I only see a question mark. A question mark because God knows that there is an answer to that question. If God be for us, can the devil really be against us? No. According to James chapter 5 verse 7, James 5 verse 7, the Bible may declare, if I submit to God, then I can resist the devil and he will flee from me. James 4 7. If you submit to God, you resist the devil. James 4 7. Submit to God, you resist the devil, he will flee. What about demons? Oh, they, they are mere servants of the devil. In Mark chapter 16, verse 17, Mark 16, verse 17, we are not to even to pay much attention to them, we are to cast them out. If God is for us. What about herbalists? Uh, occultists, witches, wizards, whatever name you want to call them. Hmm. If God is on our side, Isaiah 54, verses 16 and 17, Isaiah 54, 16 and 17, may declare, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Why? Because it's our Father who made all the rules, all the herbs, everything that they want to put together to harm us. He will just say to those things, don't walk, that's all. And then many a times we think that our enemies are those who are criticizing us. They shouldn't bother you at all. Isaiah 54 verse 17b, Isaiah 54 verse 17b says, oh, all you need to do is rebuke them. Every tongue that speaks against you, you just say, I rebuke you in the name of the Lord. And they'll be compared to keep silent. So then, who is the enemy to fear? Who is the enemy that we must overcome? This day number one of this Congress. The first and biggest victory of all is victory over yourself. Just like the passage we read as text, the one who is slow to anger, the one who can control his anger, is considered greater than the mighty. The one who can control himself is a bigger victor than the one who takes a city. On the other hand, Proverbs 25 verse 28 Proverbs 25 verse 28 The Bible says If you can rule your spirit If you can control yourself You are like a city broken down And without walls If you don't conquer yourself God says you are like a city Without defense at all And I will just give you one or two examples And then I will tell you Give you seven reasons why I know That by the grace of God Before you leave here tonight You would have overcome the flesh <laughs> Consider Cain Genesis chapter 4 From verse 1 to 14 Genesis 4 Verse 1 to 14 a Bible says Cain was the firstborn of the whole world. But because he couldn't control himself, he became the number one vagabond of human history. The firstborn who ended up as the first vagabond. Consider Esau. He was another firstborn. 
Genesis 25 from verse 29 to 34 Genesis 25 29 to 34 here is one fellow who could have gotten a tremendous amount of blessing but he couldn't control his stomach so he sold his birthright when the time came for the blessing he missed it consider Samson Judges chapter 16 from verse 1 to the end Judges 16 verse 1 to the end consider that mighty man who was baptized in the Holy Spirit even before he was born who with the jawbone of an ass could defeat a thousand enemies but he couldn't control himself and he ended up a blind prisoner in the prison of his enemies so I want to start tonight by praying for somebody that victory over yourself shall be yours tonight in Jesus name Now let me give you seven reasons I want to be brief tonight to give you some time to pray. Seven reasons why I am sure you can have victory over yourself. Reason number one, if you are truly born again, then you are a child of God. That's reason number one. John chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. John 1, 11 and 12. Tells us that Jesus came to his own. His own received him not. But to as many as received him, to them gave he power to be called sons of God. And if you are a child of God, then, according to 1 John chapter 3, verses 8 and 9, 1 John 3, 8 and 9, the seed of God dwells in you. He that is born of God does not sin, and he can't even do so because the seed of God dwells in him. If your salvation is genuine, there is something in you that will say no to sin every time. No matter how hungry a cat may be, a cat is not going to eat grass. Why? They don't eat grass in each generation. This, there is a seed inside the cat that says your food is not grass. No matter how hungry a sheep may be, it's not going to eat flesh because there is a seed in the sheep that says your food is not flesh. No matter the temptation, there is a seed in the child of God, the seed of God that say, hey, hey, in your generation it is holiness, not sin. So if you are truly born again, and that's, a, that's something you need to really settle tonight in case you are not sure. If you are truly born again, the seed of God is in you. And that seed will guarantee victory over sin. That's the reason number one. Number two. Jesus overcame and so, you and I, we will also overcome. Hebrews 4, verse 14 to 16. 
Hebrews 4, 14 to 16 says, He was tempted in every manner of temptation, and yet without sin. Temptation is no sin. It is when you yield to temptation that trouble comes. Jesus was tempted in every way possible, but he did not sin. And Philippians 4.13, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things. How many things? All things. Through Christ, who strengthens me. Because he overcame, we can overcome too. That's why I'm decreeing tonight that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter what temptation will ever come your way, you will overcome. <laughs> Number three. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, he said, there is no temptation that will ever come your way. That is not common to men. And God will not allow you to be tempted more than you are able to bear. He won't send you a temptation you can't handle. And went further to say, with every temptation, he will provide a way of escape. With everyone. God will not tempt you, he won't send you a temptation beyond your ability to handle. I've told you again and again, I used to be a boxer. And one thing we do in boxing in those days, and I think they still do it today, is that before two people will go into the ring to fight, they must weigh them. So if somebody is a heavy weight and another is a feather weight, they won't put the two of them together in the ring. They will only put a heavy weight versus a heavy weight. God will not give you a temptation beyond your ability to handle. The temptation that will come across the way of a general vice is not going to be the same size as that of a pastor. It won't be the same as, it, as that of a worker. Temptations are graded according to how much you can handle. And then with every temptation, God will make a way of escape. One of my sons walking in a very sensitive position was offered a huge sum of money. An amount that is more than all the salaries he could ever earn in his whole lifetime. And there's no way anybody could find out. Because the money is not going to be in check. It's not going to be by bank transfer. <laughs> it's going to be in Ghana must go. He said when he had the amount, he himself stood still. Ah, it may be if I take this, um, Maybe if I fast for 10 days, God will forgive. Then suddenly he remembered that in one of my previous sermons, I had said, if you buy a car with the money that you did not earn lawfully, you will be riding in a moving coffin. And he made up his mind, I don't want to die young. 
I pray for every one of you here today. Any blessing that is going to lead you to premature death will not come your way. With every temptation, God makes a way of escape. He will make the way of escape. Number four, why I'm sure that you will have victory tonight over yourself, is that it is written. It is in the Word of God. Romans chapter 6. You can read it from verse 1 to 14. Romans 6, verse 1 to 14. Is God says specifically in his word, Sin shall have no dominion over you. And it is written, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. So you and I can say loud and clear if we believe God, if we believe his word, if we know that his word is forever settled. You can open your mouth and say loud and clear, sin shall have no dominion over me. You better say it loud and clear. Why? Because it is written. It is written. Let me give you number, reason number five. Why I know you will have victory over yourself tonight. And that is that the power of God himself will keep you. Oh, it's written true. First Peter chapter 1 verse 5. 1 Peter 1, verse 5. Apostle Peter himself said, We are kept by the power of God. We are kept by the power of God. Psalm 121, verses 4 and 5. Psalm 121, verses 4 and 5 said, the one who keeps us neither sleeps nor slumbers. Those of us who are standing today can tell you categorically we are standing only because God kept us. The power of God kept us. And that's what I used to tell when I see men of God who are older than myself, who have been on this journey for much longer than myself. Like one fellow that I met, I think it was in Malaysia, for a world conference of uh, Pentecostals. And he was approaching 90 years. And he has been kept... By God. I said, if God can keep you, He will keep me. How many of you believe God will keep you to the end? Because the one who is keeping us will neither sleep nor slumber. As a matter of fact, the longer you serve Him, the more precious you become to Him, the more determined He is to keep you to the end. In the name that's above every other name, we will all finish well. <laughs> Reason number six. And that is that the Holy Spirit will help us. We cannot run this race on our own. We need help. And the Holy Spirit will help us. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 says, It's not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. It will help us in various ways. 
But one of the ways the Holy Spirit will help us is that He will help us to pray victorious prayers. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Romans 8, verse 26 says, We don't even know how best to pray. But the Holy Spirit can help us pray. It can help us intercede. It can help us pray according to the will of God. That's why those of you who are yet to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, you must not leave this Congress ground this week without the baptism in the Holy Spirit. You need it. Because one of the ways the Holy Spirit will help you as you begin to pray in the Spirit, as you begin to walk in the Spirit, is that He will even tell you in advance when danger is coming to prepare you, to get you ready. So that by the time the temptation comes, you are more than prepared for whatever the enemy is bringing. I don't want to tell you many stories tonight because I want you to pray. So I go to number seven. Which to me is probably the greatest reason why I know you will overcome. Even as I will overcome. And you know the reason? It is that God loves me. I don't know about you, but I know my own. How do I know that God loves me? John 3.16 John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, and I'm part of the world, so I can say, For God so loved Adeboe. And I've told you again and again, he loves me more than he loves you. He loves me. He loves you. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 37. Romans 8 37. He said we are more than conquerors. Why? Because... We are loved. Seven major reasons why you will become an overcomer over yourself from now on. Seven major reasons why it doesn't matter the temptation the devil may want to bring, you will overcome. One young man said, sir, every time I'm about to have a breakthrough, a temptation will come. And his own temptation was with women. He said, once I fall, the miracle will just disappear. I said, the reason is simple. You can't say, say, I think it must be a problem from my father's house. I said, no, 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 no. It's not a problem from your father's house. You are the problem. Identify the problem as yourself. I said, are you ready to pray a serious prayer? A violent prayer? He said, because I'm tired of failing. I said, are you ready to pray a violent prayer? He said, what kind of prayer? I told him, pray to God. I said, Lord, the next time I commit adultery, let me become impotent. He said, ha. I said, you see? You are blaming the devil. Don't blame the devil. The problem is you. How many of you are ready to pray some violent prayers here tonight? Let me hear you shout hallelujah. 
Thank God he prayed the prayer. And today he can look back. And he has series upon series upon series of breakthroughs. You overcome yourself, the rest is easy. So if you are here, and you have to move fast, if you are here and you are not sure of your salvation, because the reason number one for having victory over yourself is that you must be a child of God. If you are not sure of your salvation, if you are not sure that you have truly been born again, I'm going to count from one to seven. Before I say seven, you must be standing before me here so we can pray for your salvation. Because if a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. All things become new. So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, um, run forward and let's pray for your salvation. It's not a joking matter. It's either you are born again or you are not. If you are born of God, the seed of God will be in you. That seed will be find it repugnant to sin. So if you want to come, better come now. Three. If you are not born again, you are a sinner. And it is the nature of a sinner to sin. But if you are truly born again, you become a child of God. And he that is born of God, the seed of God will be in him. And those of you already in front and those of you on the way, talk to the Almighty God now. Cry to him. God, I want genuine salvation, the real thing. Save my soul tonight and I will serve you for the rest of my life. Save my soul, forgive all my sins and give me that grace to live a life of purity and a life of holiness. Go ahead, cry unto God. The rest of us, please let's stretch our hands towards these our brothers and sisters and intercede for them that the almighty God will have mercy on them and save their souls and cleanse them in his blood today so that they will have a brand new life. And I will ask the counselors to please come and attend to the people here because we are going to need the front of the altar immediately after their own salvation. Let's intercede for them. Cancel us. God bless you. Let's move very quickly. Cry to God. Have mercy on me. I don't want to sin anymore. I want to live a life of holiness. I want to live a life that is pleasing unto God. Have mercy on me, Lord. Let your blood wash away all my sins. Today, let your blood wash away all my sins. Make me a child of God. Let me become a member of the family of God. Thank you, Father. Let's intercede for them for just one more minute. Pray that the Almighty God Himself will save their souls and wash them clean. Write their names in the book of life and give them a brand new beginning. And the Almighty God will take them into the family of God. And the seed of God will begin to dwell in them. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. 
Savior, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for your word. And I want to thank you for these people who have come forward to surrender their life to you. Father, you promised that whosoever will come unto you, you will no wise cast out. They have come to you now, Father. Please receive them in Jesus' name. Let your blood wash away all their sins. Please save their souls. Write their names in the book of life. Receive them into the family of God. And give them a brand new beginning. From now on, my Father and my God, the grace to live holy, give unto them in Jesus' name. Thank you, my Father and my God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, those of you in front, let me hear you shout hallelujah. God bless you. I will be praying for you from now on. Your names, your address, your prayer request. And I promise you, I'll be praying for you. It will be time for us to pray.
you for it. I want you to write down the following prayer points. Because I want to give you some minutes to pray. This is your week of victory. And you must be ready to pray like you have never prayed before. Prayer point number one. Father, thank you for saving me. That's point number one. Thank you for saving me. Number two. Lord Jesus, just as you overcame Let me overcome all temptations that may come my way. Just as you overcame, let me overcome all temptations that may come my way. Number three, Father, by your power, keep me holy and pure to the end. By your power, keep me holy and pure till the end. Number four, blessed Holy Spirit. Help me always to pray victorious prayers. Blessed Holy Spirit, help me always to pray victorious prayers. Number five, because of your love for me, Father, make me always more than a conqueror. Because of your love for me, Father, make me always more than a conqueror. Number six, Lord Jesus, you prayed for Peter. Please pray for me now. You prayed for Peter. That's why you overcame. Pray for me now. Number seven is where you know your own personal weakness lies. And you discuss that with God. Violently, if need be. 
know the area of your personal weakness. Remember the Lord said, if it is your right eye that's about to cause you to stumble, you are to pluck it out. If it's your right hand, you are to cut it off. You know where your own personal weakness lies. That's where you are going to concentrate your number seven prayer. I'm going to give you only 15 minutes to cry to God. This time, the altar is open. This is a week we don't want to joke with at all. So if you want to come to the altar to pray, come. For 15 minutes, let's cry unto the Almighty God. So that by the time we get up from our knees, we will know that we are on our way to victory. We start by praising God for saving us. We cry to Jesus that as he overcame, we too want to overcome. We ask the Almighty Father to keep us holy and pure by his power. We cry to the Holy Spirit to help us pray victorious prayers. We cry to God that because of his love for us, that he should please make us more than conquerors. And we cry to Jesus Christ that as he prayed for Peter, he will pray for us also. And then we discuss our own special area of weakness where we know we must have help tonight. Let's go ahead and talk to God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The Almighty God will answer your prayers. Because Jesus overcame, you will overcome. The power of the Almighty God Himself will keep you to the end. You'll be more than a conqueror. And the one who prayed for Peter will pray for you. You will overcome anger. You will overcome immoral thoughts. From now on, you will be able to control your stomach. You overcome laziness. You overcome impatience. Every area where the devil has been tempting you in the past, you will overcome. And because you are going to overcome yourself, beginning from now, you'll be singing songs of victory. Physically, you'll be victorious. Materially, you'll be victorious. Maritally, you'll be victorious. Mentally, you'll be victorious. Spiritually, you'll be victorious. In your home, you'll be victorious. In your career, you will be victorious. And you will finish well. It shall be well with you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let me hear you shout hallelujah. 